Meanwhile, Jiro starts a relationship with Nahoko, but her tuberculosis worsens. And Nahoko voluntarily goes to a sanatorium on the plateau. But Jiro doesn't go and see her. That's because the project for his new plane has already started and he doesn't have the time. But he is engrossed in debate with his colleagues every night. He's not doing this just for fun. He's doing it because it's part of his job to inspire all the workers in the project. He thought it was his duty, and he rarely visits Nahoko's sanatorium. I talked about Jiro's letter to Nahoko a few years ago. He asks how she's feeling in his first two lines, but other than that, he only talks about his work. Nahoko is bored in the sanatorium. It says clearly that she's bored in the original draft, and then she sees a snowflake, Kazabana. Kazabana, which literally means windflower, is a snowflake that comes from the mountains. It's early for snow, but snow from the mountains travels on the wind. It's a sign that snow will fall before long. At this moment, she knows that she's soon going to die. Snow will fall soon. Once the snow starts to fall, the sanatorium will be isolated. She can't go out, and Jiro can't come to see her either. She knows that she won't live to see the spring. She feels that she must get out of there before the snow falls, or else she will never see Jiro again. The snowflake makes Nahoko realize that her time is limited. Nahoko escapes from the sanatorium. The snow starts to fall the day after she runs away. So it was a close call. She doesn't want to die waiting for him. She wants to see him before she dies. Jiro gets a call from Nahoko's family that she has escaped, and he rushes to the station. They reunite once again at the station in the NHK documentary called A Thousand Days of the Wind Rises. We see Miyazaki struggling to draw the storyboard. He's cursing and correcting all the drawings done by other animators. He looks at the drawing of Jiro from behind when he's waiting for Nahoko and says, What is this? This says nothing! I guess Miyazaki had something specific in his mind about Jiro's back. That's why he was furious and had to correct the drawing. And the two meet at the station. He was going to encourage Nahoko as soon as they met at the station and say, let's go back to the sanatorium. You can do this. Let's cure the disease, which is understandable. But once he meets her, he doesn't want to let her go. He says to her, don't go. Nahoko is sensible and says, I was going to go back after I saw you. But Jiro in the frame before this says, don't go back once again. It says, because it was unexpected, although she wanted him to say that, she looks at him in surprise. Nahoko's face lights up with joy in the storyboard. Jiro says to her, let's live here together. Because she didn't expect this to happen, she is filled with joy and her face brightens up. People around her would always tell her to get better. They would say, get better and go on living, because they cared about her. Tuberculosis is very infectious, and the death rate is high. That's what people thought back then. But for Nahoko, getting better means giving up living. It means living confined in a lonely place. So the people who tell her to get better care about her, but don't understand her. Jiro was the first to tell her, you don't have to get better. He is essentially saying to her, you don't have to get cured. I don't mind getting infected. Let's die together. 
This story is in a way similar to No Longer Human by Osamu Dazai. That novel is about a guy who couldn't die together with his lover. They planned a double suicide. It is a story about a guy who lives with shame because the woman dies before him. And The Wind Rises is also a story about an airplane designer who is supposed to die with the love of his life but fails. He must go on living and endure the shame afterwards. If you realize that this is a story about a double suicide, you'll understand this tobacco scene. The two go to Kurokawa's house and have a private wedding. That night, Nahoko says to Jiro, Come here! When Jiro hesitates, she cuts in and says, Come here, again, lifting the futon. She says, Come here twice in this scene, and this is linked to the last scene. So remember that. Why does she say, Come here twice? On the storyboard, you can see the connections between this and the last scene. They tie the knot, but Jiro comes home late every night, and at some point, he starts working at home. Before that, no matter how busy he was, he never worked at home. But in order to spend more time with Nahoko, he has no choice. Nahoko in bed asks Jiro who is working beside her to hold her hand. Jiro takes her hand in his left hand and keeps tapping the calculator with his right. He is excited and says, I think it's going to work out. I can make it 20 grams lighter. He's struggling with his work at the company, but when he works at home holding her hand, everything goes well. When I saw the scene where Jiro is smoking while working, I thought, he was such a selfish guy. I thought, doesn't he know that he's shortening Nahoko's life? But I was wrong. When Jiro says, I want to smoke, will you release my hand? She says, no, which is unusual for her. She never refuses what Jiro wants. So Jiro smokes with one hand. Jiro smokes when his work is going well. It is a sign that his work is on track. His brain becomes more active when the work is going smoothly. That's why he starts to smoke. They're creating their own plane together, holding each other's hands. Naoko's blood flows through Jiro's body and it eventually breathes new life into the Kyushi single-seater fighter plane. Naoko doesn't want anybody to help her live. That's not what she wants. She wants to be the one to help. She wants to take care of Jiro. She wants to help him create planes. But Jiro doesn't realize her intentions. So it is similar to the story of Twilight Crane. She is like the crane weaving the fabric with her own feathers and telling the old couple never to enter her room. She weaves her own life. That's why she doesn't let go of his hand. That's because she knows that her life is being used to create the Zero Fighter planes. That is the only way she can share life with this man who knows nothing but planes. Of course, he can always compliment her and say she's beautiful, but she's more than that. She's an active person. She knows that to be part of this man's life, she has no choice but to help him make zero fighter planes. If Naoko didn't escape the sanatorium, the zero fighter planes would never have been completed. There's a scene where Jiro says, I owe it all to you. I thought first that he was thanking her for supporting him, but this is actually a dark fantasy. As if they were in the demon world, her pulse flows through Jiro's body and they create a plane together, the fruit of their love. But eventually, this Zero Fighter plane destroys Japan. The structure of the story is pretty extreme. 
I divided the film into blocks. Then I gradually began to realize that there was a connection between each block and the next. They're all connected. Naoko never consults Jiro about what to do. I am going to the sanatorium. I am escaping the sanatorium. I am going back to the sanatorium once my job is done. She never consults with Jiro about her decisions. She decides on her own. She's very independent. She decides to stay beside him until the plane is completed. And as soon as her job is done, she goes back to the sanatorium because there's nothing else to do. Kurokawa's wife says she only wanted to show her beautiful side, but she doesn't understand Nahoko fully. She saw half of Nahoko, but the other half of Nahoko says, I simply have nothing more to do. She wanted to be with Jiro because she wanted to help, not just because she loved Jiro. She has guts and she's extremely active, just like all the other heroines in Miyazaki films. Miyazaki is objecting to Isao Takahata's claim that we no longer need fantasies. This is a dark fantasy. He's saying that reality is the fantasy, a poor country yearning for planes, a woman sacrificing her life for her husband. If this isn't fantasy, what is? This is his powerful antithesis against Takahata's thesis. After Jiro completes his plane, Nahoko leaves him. Kurokawa's wife has a woman's view, but I think Nahoko is a very strong person. Jiro remembered Okinu, who he met during the Great Kanto earthquake. That's because she was pretty. Nahoko knows that Jiro didn't remember her because she wasn't pretty enough. But now, because Jiro tells her that she is pretty, she concludes that he'll remember her even if she goes back to the sanatorium. That's why she goes back. Jiro doesn't know that Nahoko has left him while he's experimenting with his plane. This is the scene where the single-seater fighter plane flies. It executes the amazing Immelman turn. The plane makes a circle while rotating. It flies like this, it gains altitude at full speed, but it flips and flies upside down and comes back around while losing altitude. It twists and circles forward while rising. Oh my god, someone fell out of the cockpit. I'll pick him up later. The plane never loses speed during this exercise. When a plane gains altitude, twists, and... Uh, makes a circle, it would have been natural for it to lose speed back then. So this is a high-performance plane. It can turn while maintaining dynamic lift. It's somersaults. And it's not even a biplane. It's a monoplane. Afterwards, the wind blows and Jiro senses something strange. Miyazaki didn't want anything too dramatic. Miyazaki once criticized Osamu Tezuka. Miyazaki didn't like the fact that Tezuka kills off his characters just to make the audience cry. Tezuka did this to evoke emotions in the audience, but Miyazaki didn't like that. So, he didn't want Jiro to be absent from Nahoko's deathbed. He didn't want Jiro to rush home and say, the plane is finished, only to find out that she's already dead. Miyazaki wanted to avoid that. That's why Nahoko leaves Jiro. Nobody knows whether they will see each other again. Nobody knows whether Nahoko dies or not. It's a story about the death of Nahoko and Japan. Jiro loved both of them because of their beauty. 
He creates zero fighter planes and tries so hard to keep Japan alive, but he fails. He fails to save Japan, he fails to save everything that was beautiful to him. In the opening scene, Jiro tries to save the girls in the spinning mill. He tries to save the beautiful landscape of the rice paddies from the attack of the German airship, but he fails miserably. So this opening sequence is a summary of the whole story.